I've had Basenji since 1962 and lived with them, Carol and I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basenji since 1962. We started the same year. Same year. And I've, I've seen a lot of the, the great dogs of the breed, you know, and I've had my hands on a lot of them. And I love the breed. I'm passionate about them. And I hope to share some of that passion with you today. It, it's a fun breed. There are misconceptions out there. We love them. You don't have to count your fingers or toes, you know, after judging them. After, when the seminar is over, you're prob hopefully the idea is for you to say, oh good, I get to go judge the Basenjis. And I hope to share with you why, why we love the breed. Now, the Basenji is one of the oldest breeds known to man. Um, their, their origins are shrouded in the mists of time. We are very fortunate in that we are able to go back to our foundation stock, native stock that's still in Africa, and bring them back over. The AKC has opened our stud book, and at present we are able to bring in dogs from Africa and register them. We have some 100% African dogs. Some of them are uh, born in the jungle. Others are descended from the African dogs. All right, it, basically Central Africa is where we're, we're finding breeding stock. Um, the original founders came from this general area. Um, we're still going back and importing them. Gives you an idea. And here's a hunt, and the results of a hunt. They hunt small game in dense forest. The size, is, size of the dog is important. They need to be small, agile. They have to go through dense jungle to get the game. It's not a flat foot race. They have to go into the jungle, and they drive the game out into the nets of the waiting hunters where the game is speared and the dogs are lucky if they get you know, remnants of whatever is left over. They serve their, their masters as they have for thousands of years by providing protein from the hunt for the family's dinner. Uh, very valuable dogs. Um, they, they work with their masters. Uh, they live in the villages with the, the people. A dog with a bad temperament isn't tolerated because they sleep in the huts with the villagers and their children. Um, they have no place to keep a mean-tempered dog, and a dog they couldn't live with would go in the pot. So temperament is vitally important. This is um, hunt. They use these long nets. They spread them through the jungle, and then the dogs go in the other side, drive whatever is in there out. It could be uh, prey. could be a prey animal. could be something edible. could be something mean with teeth and claws. You never know what, what they're going to find. So the dogs and the, the hunters are pretty brave when it comes to, you know, the hunt. I saw a travel log once on television and there were a group of hunters and the dogs ran into the jungle. A few minutes later the dogs came running back through the clearing the other direction as fast as they could. The hunters watched the dogs run past them and took off after them. A few minutes later, a silverback gorilla came into the clearing. Ooh. Everybody was, was gone by that time. <laughs> but they have to be smart, you know, they have to, have to be courageous, and they have to know when it's time to turn tail and run. And when the, the hunters saw the dogs running, they knew it was time to get out of town. Okay. This is a lovely African bitch taken uh, in Africa. I note the, the bell around her neck. The dogs don't bark. Uh, they put pebbles inside so they know where the, the dogs are. And I've heard recently that the resonance of the bells is important, that they, they um, like the harmonics of certain types of bells. So it, it, it's always something new that we're learning. They are identified, you know, the dogs. So the, the dogs have different bells, you know, with the different tones, so the hunters know which dog is right. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, that's something I, I hadn't, hadn't known. I just learned it yesterday. And here's, this is from our recent expedition, I believe in, was it March of this year? So this was mistaken. And you can see the puppy and the, the pup, they're trained from a very early age to identify with the hunters and the, the proceeds of the hunt, and they're ready to go out and back some game. And here's a, another photo. 
Now this is uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they can adapt to modern times, but uh, something you probably wouldn't see here. But it's a wonderful photo. And here they, they live in the village, you know, with, with the children. And I imagine if, if you were a stranger, you'd have a hard time getting into that hut. But this is the life, you know, they're, they're family dogs. And there's a, a bitch in Africa. And you can see very typical, very similar to what we have here. And here's a boy and his dog. You know. Dog doesn't look real happy, but he's willing to do what's what's needed. It's water. It's water. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> like water. There dangerous things in the water. And here's a dog. With it. And there's the tricolors. That's a very typical looking dog. That's a pretty dog. It is. And it's a subsistence uh, economy. It's very difficult to get into the areas where the dogs are to be found. And uh, people rely on them for you know, filling their, their pots. There's a kid showing a dog. You see the temperament of the dog, though? <laughs> well, he actually he could. I mean, if, if he didn't want to be in that position, he, he would probably end up in the pot. <laughs> Okay. Jungle drums beating, excitement is in the air. It runs, I chase it. Now that's a Basinji. They're, they're all, they're runners, they're not true sighthounds, but if something is running, they're after it. So they have no sense, they hit by cars, <coughs> need to be kept on leads. Now, for scale, you can see the, the size of the dog, that's definitely a Basinji sized dog. And here they are on the they were given as gifts and brought to the courts of the pharaohs, and they were uh, valued very highly for their hunting ability. And here it is on the, the walls of a tomb. So you fast forward, this is 1200 BC, fast forward to 1912, and they're stuffed in a museum. And this was an exhibit in the New York Museum, American Museum of Natural History. I don't think it's in, um, it's current, but it's probably in their archives. You know the the bell on the dog. And that's a very typical looking Basinji, but instead of being taken back for breeding stock, he was collected and stuffed. Hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that? Okay. Now this is a small, short-haired hunting dog from Africa. Their appearance should give you an idea of boundless energy and uh, controlled mayhem. And that that dog is ready to go out after you know whatever moves. Short back, lightly built, high on the leg compared to length. They should be square, but give you the appearance of, of being leggy, having a lot of leg underneath them. Eagle head proudly carried. And that, that's a lovely picture. Not the clean, fine bone and the nice front fill. Well arched neck. That's something we're losing, and it's, it's important if you judge a class of dogs and you see one with a nice arch, nice arched neck give it, you know, extra consideration. Probably goes along with a nice front. Tail eyes set in curl. Single curl is just as acceptable as a double curl. We like the tight donut curls, but if you have a high set single curl, that's perfect. And the set is more important than the degree of curl. So a well set single curl trumps a loose or a, a low set double curl tail. And it, it Notice the shelf on the rear of the dog, and you can see behind behind the tail. Uh, it gives it gives you a longer pelvis and extra room for muscle attachment, and it's it's a very nice feature. And again, it's something that that we don't always see. Okay, whatever you do, please don't uncurl the tails. Okay, they're short haired. There's nothing you can see if you uncurl it, and uh, they, a lot of them just hate it, and you may get unexpected results if you go around curling <laughs> their tails. <laughs> and if, if you have a doubt, you know you can go to the go to the opposite side of the dog. When the dog moves, you can see the the set. And basically, this is a dog you judge, on, you examine on the table, and judge on the ground. We our exhibitors can hide a lot of things, but they can't hide anything when the dog is moving. 
um, if you're in doubt, put the dog on the ground and move them around. Okay, poised, elegant, graceful. Alert. And agile. That's, that's a wonderful photo there. <clears throat> racehorse trotting full out. Standard says they should give the appearance of a racehorse trotting full out. What we mean, we know dogs and horses are not built the same way, they don't move the same way. This horse gives you the appearance of effortless motion. He can go all day. What we want is a dog that floats and is light on his feet. And this conveys that, that impression. Yep. Movement should be effortless. This is a square breed, and we don't need a lot of excess motion. A dog that has a lot of flash and drive is probably working too hard. Okay, Sinji hunts by both sight and scent. They have good noses, um, good eyes, good ears. They're alert to everything that's going on around them. Size, proportion, and substance. Now this is important. Dogs should be 17 inches tall, 17 inches long, that's square, and they should weigh a full 24 pounds. Now 24 pounds on a 17 inch by 17 inch dog is a lot of weight, and we want it to be muscle and not fat. So a dog that is solidly built, um, nice and fit and trim, will probably weigh more than you think he does. A lot of the dogs in the ring these days are maybe 19, 20, 22 pounds. 24 pounds is not easy to find, but that's what we want. And you'll need to visit breeders, or we have dogs here that you can examine tomorrow and, and today that are these proportions. And it may be more than, than you're currently seeing in the ring. Same for bitches, 22 pounds on a 16 inch by 16 inch package. And this, this particular bitch here was, was that size. Okay, heads are important and it's, we have a variety of heads in the breed. Obliquely set eyes are disappearing. They should be almond shaped and they should be uh, dark, coordinating with the color of the coat. The head on the right is just a gorgeous head, you know, but you, you probably won't see many of those. If you do, you know, find a place for it because <laughs> it's fast disappearing. The head on the left is a different head, but it, it has that quizzical, puzzled expression, and it's, it's very attractive. And you'll note the broad back skull for muscle attachment, and that's, that's something that we're also in danger of losing. We have a lot of narrow heads, and they're not correct. Eyes are bleakly set and far seeing. Now, our, our exhibitors have a trick to get that nice squinty look. If you're judging outside, they'll face the dogs into the sun, and then they're all squinting. If there's any doubt in your mind, they, you know, move into the shadow and uh, examine the, the eyes in the shade. Muzzle should be shorter than the skull. Now, some, some breeders prefer a shorter muzzle. The proportion is up, up to the, the breeder, and what fits on an individual dog. Some insist on much more shorter muzzles than others. Um, as long as the muzzle is shorter than the skull, that satisfies the standard. It should fit the size of the dog and the other proportions of the dog. Rounded cushions. Now the cushions are the fatty whisker pads underneath the whiskers. There's some confusion about exactly where the cushions are but we want a nicely, softly rounded muzzle. Now, this, this bitch was in Veterans today. She's a um, very lovely bitch. But I had a provisional judge tell me one time that he judged the sweepstakes, and he found a, a bitch that he really liked, but he couldn't put her up because her mu the other dog's muzzles came to a nice, sharp point, and hers was rounded, and it was different. And <laughs> So if you're ever in that position, this is the look that we want. They, the muzzle should be softly rounded. Okay, ears small and erect. And this is a lovely head. A nice front, nice small ears. She also has nice, nice eyes, nice shape. Keep that picture in your mind and it won't go wrong. Ears slightly hooded. And that's hooded from the side. The angle of the ear should, should be a straight line up from the curve of the neck, 
to, to the ears. The skull is flat, not domed, not softly rounded, but flat between the ears. The skull is well chiseled. Now that's a beautiful head there. It's an Australian bitch from about 30 years ago, maybe. If you see a head like that, you know, that's your dog. <laughs> that's what's gorgeous. Notice the brow ridges. That's something that we don't often see, but we like to like it when we can see it. Medium width. Okay, and the, the head is a t series of tapers. It's not a true wedge. It tapers from the, the back skull to the eyes, and then it tapers again from the foreface to the muzzle. So it, it's soft and delicate and pretty. Not, not a harsh by any means. Wrinkles are fine and profuse. Uh, that's just a pretty picture. You probably won't find wrinkles like this. Wrinkles have a protective function. Um, when you're judging, you, you'll look at the wrinkles. The important part is that the wrinkles are formed by the profuse, profuse pliant skin. And the pliant skin allows them to go through the jungle without getting hung up. Um, if an animal grabs, it's, grabs at it, it can wiggle away. And it protects its vital organs because they're not just right there for you to, to bite. There's a lovely wrinkles on this dog. A nice, nice masculine head. There's a, a bitch. Nice, nice wrinkles, but they're not always visible. If the dog is relaxed, the ears are back, you won't see wrinkles like this. Um, you can you can look for them on the table. You might be better served to wait till the dog's on the table on the ground, and then the exhibitor can can get the dog alert and looking at you. Some of them will leap on the table if you make funny noises. And they're better better looked examined on the or looked looked at on the ground. In the nose, black is greatly desired. Our standard used to say a pinkish tinge should not be penalized on an otherwise first class dog. Well, we changed it when we revised the standard, and now it just says black greatly desired. So all the noses in the ring will be black. Now, if you want to examine pigment, it's good to check the eye rims and the lips, because that may be what they look like at home. <laughs> now, it's, it's, not a, it's not a deal breaker. If a, dog, if a dog like that walks into your ring, if it's the best dog there, then it's, you know, it's a very minor point. They're, they're, they're still out there, and uh, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, neck, good length, well-crested, well-centered of shoulders. And that's, that's a dog, that dog isn't ideal for a, a lot of breeders. It's not an older dog, but it's gorgeous. Veronica said it was made up of three different pictures. Was it? <laughs> I don't believe it. I like it. Yeah. Well, whatever, whatever they did, yeah, was <laughs> a nice picture. But they, they, they were very creative in those days, so it's, it's hard to say what the actual dog looked like, but that's what we'd like to see. The baby looked like that. The back is level, and that's that same bitch from before, the softly rounded muzzle. Body balance, short back, short couple. Just notice the, the high tail set in the shelf. Nice short little back. Very nice picture. Ribs oval, deep to elbow. And we want the length of the body to be in the rib cage with the shorter one. And that's nice, nice four chest on that dog. We don't want a cathedral front, and you'll you'll find that. But if you have nice nice fill in front, that's very desirable. Laid back. They're not super angulated. The dog should be balanced, equal front and rear. Okay, pasterns of good length, strong and flexible. And this is really important because we enjoy an active lifestyle. <laughs> Carol Ann. <laughs> I think that was a nine month old puppy. Five, five, five month old puppy. <laughs> yeah, they're very active dogs. 
Okay, feet, small oval and compact. Thick pads, well arched toes. It's not a cat foot, it's not a hair foot. It's a small oval, compact foot. They're, they have different feet. The feet should flow from the, the fine bone of the leg. It should be a unit and you don't want big lumpy feet at the end of the, the leg. Just a, a nice picture like that. Bone clean and fine. I'm so sorry my first one, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a famous dog. Yeah. Maybe one of the first Basinjis to place in the group. Amber? Carol? <laughs> I, I don't even know if he placed it. He maybe group, never but did. He was certainly a try ahead of his time, in my opinion. Yeah. You just didn't find tries like that in, in those days. Yeah. He was a beautiful dog. Beautiful. Yeah, he was yeah. ahead of his time. I, yeah. yeah. Hind yeah. quarters yeah. strong, muscular. Yeah. Oxwell down, the second thigh is long. Just a moderate, moderate rear. Goes with the moderate front. Coat short and fine. Now, color is is a topic of much discussion these days. We have a variety of colors. Some of the African imports have brought in colors that we hadn't seen previously. Some of them are just a recreation of colors that had been in the breed and. Some of them we've eliminated through selective breeding. Um, you know, it, it's not an issue. This isn't a color breed. This is a domestic or a, a, an African hunting dog. And the important thing is the dog itself and not the color. Color is something, I mean, we love our deep, dark colors and we breed for them. But sometimes we're willing to give in certain areas. And color is, is one area that, that some people have, have been able to, to give. Okay, the skin is very pliant, and you probably won't want to do this in the ring. <laughs> but uh, that dog didn't mind. But you know, that's that's the kind of skin that can get you out of tight spots. Now, it's valuable when you're in battle with friend or foe. <laughs> Gets you out of tight spots. <laughs> Okay, here, color and markings, rich, clear, and well-defined. Those are the words of the standard, and that's that's the ideal, and that's what we're all aiming for. But we do have a variety of patterns and markings. Chestnut red. Um, we like the, the deep, rich chestnut red when we can find it. They're not all deep chestnut red. Some of them are kind of paper bag, and we live with that, and you know, we're always trying to improve where we can. Pure black and there won't be tan hairs anywhere on the body. Tricolor, pure black and chestnut red, and that's what the standard says about the tricolor dogs. Pure black and chestnut red, it doesn't indicate that pips are required or even necessary. You note on the, the facial markings, there's a clear path of red all the way back. This is a variant, and you see the, the little uh, island and they're both equally acceptable. This is a brindle pointed try. This is what happens when you mix the brindle, which has uh, recently been imported, maybe 20, <laughs> maybe not recently, maybe in the, the 80s we brought in the... Not recent anymore. Not recent anymore. And there, there were brindles previously, but none were imported into the United States and registered. And you notice that it has stripes on wherever the tan markings are. There'll be stripes on the ears, stripes on the belly. And it's, uh, the Basinji Club of America has, the board of directors has issued a statement that they're to be judged the same as any other tricolor dog. It's, it's acceptable. Now this is also black, tan, and white. These dogs are born uh, completely black and they'll get tan as they age. You probably won't see any in the ring. I haven't seen one for years. They were generally put in pet homes. If you have one like this in the ring and it's the best dog, go ahead and put it up. And there have been some lovely dogs through the years and just don't usually get into the ring. Okay, this is also a tricolor dog. Uh, it's a saddle. Finished in 1951, this is an AKC champion. Uh, you probably won't see this in the ring either, but it, it does qualify under the 
standard description of pure black and chestnut red. You'll note that it doesn't have clear lines of demarcation. So you could quibble about that and, and fault it, but it does fit our standard. Okay, Grindel, black stripes on the background of chestnut red. And you'll find different variations of the Grindel as well. Some of them have a darker background. Some of them have a, a clear red. And it's, it's one thing that we're working on, but if you have, you know, it's, it's not a deal breaker. It's color. And it's very attractive. It could be camouflage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they all have white chest, feet, and tail tip. Now that's the Grindle point and try again, and it's just a very elegant picture. You won't have a problem with dogs lacking white because it, it goes with the, the coloration, and you may find white toes uh, more or less white. It's, it's not really a problem. We don't want white in odd places, but we'll live with it. And it's, it's an individual variable thing. That, that, that's a nice picture there. Okay, swift tireless trot. Stride is long. Smooth and effortless. Now this is a half African. This mother, her mother was born in Africa and imported, bred to a domestic dog. Um, I think this bitch is in Germany now. And her litter brother was winner's dog at the National several years ago. So we have dogs of recent African uh, import stock that are doing some significant winning. And that's a very lovely dog. Top line remains level. You'll see dogs that are high in the rear. It could be conditioning, it could be just the structure, but we do want a level top line. <coughs> Coming in, they single track, you know, but, um, as they move forward at um, just standard normal dog movement going away. Speed increases, they, they go to the center line of gravity. Portion and side gate. Now this is important. These dogs are the same height. One Dog A is a little bit longer than dog B. And this, this gives you exactly, they're both nice dogs. They're actually owned by the same person, so you know, put the slide together. You'll see both in the ring. They both have nice extension. Dog, dog B, the square dog, that's really what we want to see. And if you have a nice square dog, but he's not moving with the length of stride as the longer dog, we would like you to focus on the dog that fits the standard, which is the square dog. But if the best dog in your ring is a little bit off square, then you know that's, that's not a problem. You have to judge. The individual dog, um, we want you to focus on positive aspects. Uh, please don't fault judge. Go with the overall best dog in the ring and we'll be happy. Here's nice examples of the breed. Okay. Now the dog, dog A has the longer stride because he has a, a fault. So we would, would prefer to go with the square dog. Okay, now they're intelligent, independent, affectionate, and alert. Maybe look with strangers. Okay, now they don't like water. They're notorious for avoiding water whenever they can. And there's a very good reason for that. In Africa, there are nasty things that lurk in the, the water bodies of water. Seems they remember. <laughs> Lay back. It'd be helpful. They rear to go. They they lure course and they enjoy it. A lot of dogs have, have done very well. I've never had one that goes past the first turn, but some some people have been very successful, and we have some some great running dogs out there. It's something they they enjoy. Coming back tomorrow. Happy go lucky. Okay, 
this this one, the, the bitch in the back is 14 years old, and they painted her tail purple so the house sitter would know which one got the <laughs> special food. They live to long age. If they don't get hit by cars, they, they can go 14, 15 years easily. So so one will be 17 in November. Yeah, some of them live, live considerably longer than that, but they're, they're a long-lived breed. And they're generally very healthy as long as you can keep their weight down, and they're very good beggars. Darling puppies. That's my daughter. <laughs> she hates the, the pictures. It can be. If they're bored, you know. said they were our toys. Yeah. They're happy go lucky, great with puppies. Cooperate. <laughs> they love the sun. They'll they'll lay in the sun. They like to be warm. That's a characteristic of They'll be in the warmest spot in the house, next to the fireplace or in the sun. That's a characteristic play bell. Down the turtle. <laughs> You know, Basenjis don't bark. Um, they make other sounds, but they won't spend the afternoon barking at your neighbor's cat. Now, they may, however, spend that afternoon constructing a tunnel under the fence that separates them from that nest if you want, but they won't bark. Yeah, they've got a lot of spun. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I lost a chicken last week. Took my house garbage. Now, and in that out. case, I'm not sure who, who backed yeah. down. I don't think the puppy fared very well. Life in Africa, they're on their own. There's nobody taking them to the vet or nobody, you know, obedience training and putting them on leaves. They just do what they can to survive and have a good time doing that. Okay, thank you. attending our seminar. If we can leave you with one word, and I'll go into more than that, we want a square dog, we want a happy dog, we love these dogs, we want you to enjoy judging them. Uh, please judge the overall dog, emphasize the positives. Um, they should float around the ring, that's what we want to see, that's where we're aiming for. You may have to give and take in 
that's understandable and acceptable. Our breeders are working toward the future. We have uh, a fabulous opportunity to incorporate native stock, and we love it. And our domestic dogs are gorgeous and getting better every day. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.